Welcome! Important sampling is a crucial technique used in machine learning and robotics. It's very useful when dealing with complex probability distributions we cannot directly sample from. But why is it hard to sample from certain distributions? Well, as a brief summary, computers only generate random numbers in a limited range, for example, uniformly between 0 and 1. To actually sample a distribution, we are required to calculate the inverse CDF. The computer generates a sample uniformly from 0 to 1. This corresponds to the y-intercept of the CDF. Then we find where it hits the curve, and find the corresponding x value. This is how a random sample is actually generated. Higher probabilities lead to a steeper section of the CDF, making it more likely to be picked. Thus, if we can't analytically compute the CDF, we cannot directly sample from the distribution. So our first goal is to sample from f of x, but approximate quantities from g of x. Step 1 is to draw n samples from f of x. Note that the superscript denotes which distribution the sample is drawn from. These points can then be used to compute quantities of our distribution f. For example, if h of x is equal to x, then that's simply the mean. Alright, so here's the theory we're going to use. We want to compute the expectation with respect to g of h of x, where h of x is just some function which is by definition the definite integral of h of x gx dx. We can insert f of x over f of x because it's equal to 1. Then we rearrange and define w of x to be g of x over f of x. Now we have an expectation with respect to f, and this quantity is approximately equal to the summation with samples drawn from f. This simple manipulation leads to very powerful results. Also note that w of x is called the importance factor or the importance weight. One key assumption is that g of x greater than 0 implies f of x greater than 0. Because if we are approximating g of x, f of x needs to be able to sample from that area or else it just doesn't make sense. Also note that we don't need to worry about dividing by f of x equal to 0, since the samples we generate from f of x have non-zero probability. With this theory, step 2 simply computes the weights. Then in step 3, we can compute our desired quantities relating to g of x using our theory. Okay, time for an example, and I want to link this Google Collab down in the description. But we are tossing some dice. Here we have a fair dice that we can sample from, we also have this bias dice that we can sample from, and I manually coded up the probabilities here. We also have these two functions that help us return what the probability of each event is, and the distributions look like this. So the bias dice is much more heavily favored towards 1. And using this, we can calculate what the expected value or what the mean is. So here we have the probability of event x happening, multiplying by what event x is. And doing this, we can see that the fair dice has a mean of 3.5, and the bias dice has a mean of 2.45. So, and what are we going to do? We're going to sample now. So we have 10,000 samples that we want to go through, and we're going to sample the fair dice first, and then calculate the probability of this happening under the fair dice, then calculate the probability of this happening under the bias dice, then we calculate that importance factor, g over f, and then we simply add to total w times x. Finally, we simply just have to divide by the number of trials to get our estimates. So here we see our estimate is 2.451, which is extremely, extremely close to what the true mean is. So this shows that this method actually does work. Now, another application of important sampling is transforming one set of points under f of x to another set of points that obey g of x. One example is in the particle filter, which the video will come out soon. We have a set of particles that are each a hypothesis of where the robot is. After the motion and measurements, we want to transform this set of particles to another probability distribution that represents the new hypothesis of where the robot is. We start off the same way by sampling f of x and computing the importance weights w of x. Now since we want a valid probability distribution, we normalize our important weights by w so that the sum of all pi is equal to 1. Also note that since g of x and f of x are valid distributions, they must be greater or equal to 0, so pi is also greater or equal to 0. These two facts make p of i a valid discrete probability distribution. Now let's show why this works. Let's take the expectation of h of x with respect to pi. We can now rewrite it with our importance weights. Then, let's recall our theory where the expectation with respect to g of h of x is equal to this approximate summation. Notice that our expectation is very, very similar. It has a 1 over w factor, but the actual expectation has a 1 over n factor. Let's see if they're equal. If we set h of x equal to 1, we can see that it's just the total axiom of probability. Thus, 1 over n times the sum of the wi is equal to 1. 
which leads us to that w is approximately equal to n. Note that this result will converge under the law of large numbers when n approaches infinity. This is a powerful result and plugging it back into our first line, we see that our discrete probability distribution does indeed approximate g of x. Thus, step 4 is simply resampling this discrete probability distribution to get whole samples that in the aggregate will represent g of x. We'll see how to use this for the particle filter localization algorithm in a future video. Okay, so let's repeat the same process by using the second method that we just learned. So we want to transform one set of points into another set of points, and then use the second set of points in order to estimate the expected value. So here we have the samples of x, and we're going to keep track of all the w's. So with all of these samples, we're going to sample the fair dice, then keep track of what that sample was, and also append what the importance factor weighting was. Then we simply want to calculate the normalizing factor w, which is the sum of all of our importance factors, and then define our new probability distribution where pi is equal to wi divided by w. So our, under our second estimate, again, we can calculate the direct expected value using this probability distribution. So here we have pi, so the probability of this event, multiplied by what the event actually was. And we can see that we also get a very, very good approximation. So here it's only off by 0.003. So again, it shows that this method does work. Thank you for watching and see you next time.